A tribute and procession today for two fallen San Diego police detectives. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee and for Barbara Lee Edwards. The bodies of Ryan Park and Jamie Huntley Park were transported from the medical examiner's office to a San Diego mortuary. Also today, the husband of the driver who caused that crash spoke to News 8 for the first time, sharing his sorrow over all three deaths. News 8's Shannon Handy has more on that, as well as a sit-down interview with Chief David Nislight about the beloved couple and how he and his officers are coping. Carlo and Marcella Memorial continues to grow here outside police headquarters. While this loss has been incredibly difficult, Chief Nislight says it's the community's support and beyond that's helping him and his officers cope. A line of San Diego police vehicles escorted the bodies of Ryan Park and his wife Jamie Huntley Park from the coroner's office to the Feathery Hill Mortuary Tuesday. When they arrived, dozens of officers were there to pay their respects, a solemn moment Chief David Nislight was a part of. Part of that tradition, and you know, part of that tradition is they're never left alone. They always have a police officer with them until they're finally laid to rest next week. And uh, it's just the way that we treat family and the way that we honor those that wear the badge and unfortunately fall during while wearing the badge. Chief Nislight knew the young couple who met while in the police academy back in 2012 and got married in 2016. He and Ryan used to run together. As for Jamie, the chief says she was always part of their conversations. The best of the best. Two bright kids with Un, you know, just their careers could have gone anywhere they wanted. Uh, they were beloved colleagues, friends, family members, and just, it's just such a tragic loss. Ryan and Jamie were killed Friday on Interstate 5 near San Isidro after being hit head on by a wrong way driver. That driver has been identified by her husband as Sandra Daniels. These are pictures of the 58 year old from Instagram. By phone, Daryl Daniels tells us his family is devastated. Uh, Sandra and I have been married 33 years. <laughs> and uh, we're terribly torn apart by losing her. Daniels, a retired Navy officer, says his wife had diabetes and was at the Balboa Naval Medical Center getting insulin that morning. He believes she got lost driving due to her sugar levels possibly spiking or being too low. He says there's no way she could have done something like this on purpose. She went the wrong way. She got down there at the border and somehow when she turned around, she ended up on the wrong side. And I believe that was because of low sugar. Uh, the video that that one guy sent in showed her driving perfectly straight. I, she had, there's no way that she knew what she was doing. We're devastated. And uh, gosh, I'm just so sorry. Daniels is working with the California Higher Patrol, the agency in charge of the investigation. He's hoping they'll find her insulin pod in the wreckage to help explain what exactly happened. He'd also like to meet with the officer's families. But, As for Chief know, Nisla, he's focused on helping his department on begin to cope there. and heal. Our chaplains and our wellness unit have been extremely busy, not only taking care of the squads of both Jamie and Ryan, but the officers and the families of both Jamie and Ryan. And it's it's been nonstop around the clock, making certain that our people are are well. Chief Nislight tells me Ryan and Jamie's funeral has been scheduled for Tuesday, June 15th at 10 a.m. at the Maranatha Chapel in Rancho Bernardo. We will share more details as they become available. Thank you, Shannon. Tonight, we're seeing how Border Patrol agents found a five-year-old girl alone by the border wall in San Isidro. Agents say they saw the girl being dropped off near the end of the wall yesterday morning. She then walked along the Tijuana River Channel and into the United States. She was taken to a safe location by agents. According to the Border Patrol, she is a Guatemalan citizen. Finally, San Diego County has made it to that least restrictive yellow tier just a week before the state reopens on June 15th and gets rid of the tier system altogether. The county will officially move into the yellow tier tomorrow morning following two consecutive weeks of an adjusted case rate of fewer than two COVID cases per 100,000 residents. As News 8's Heather Hope explains, this means increased capacity for many local businesses that say even a week of extra revenue will help after a long 15 months.
Great Maple here in Hillcrest says they have been taking it slow, getting things back to normal, reopening indoors. Well, that all changes now that the county is moving into the yellow tier and that restrictions will all open up come next week. I think everybody can kind of take a little bit of sigh of relief. Restaurant owners like Johnny Rivera of four Great Maple locations say San Diego County's moving into the least restrictive yellow tier comes with some hesitancy. I'm a little apprehensive to fully celebrate yet, but you know, I think that we're really on course now to kind of get some normalcy. Board of Supervisors Advisors Chair Nathan Fletcher made the big announcement at the last regular county COVID media conference. For the next week, starting tomorrow, informal outdoor gatherings see capacities increase. Private outdoor events see capacities increase. Indoor seated events, outdoor seated events, uh, gyms, bars indoors, restaurants, Family entertainment centers, amusement parks, and water parks will all see increased capacity. Those yellow tier changes also include museums, zoos, and aquariums can be open at 100% capacity. Restaurants, breweries, wineries, and movie theaters at 50%. Saunas, spas, and steam rooms can finally reopen. Bars without food service at 25% capacity indoors. We are excited. Uh, about where we are headed. We are looking forward to retiring the tiers. Already at Great Maple, more customers are coming. We've seen a huge uptick in people coming out, wanting to hang out. It's great news the yellow tier allows 50% capacity, but what will that look like? It's kind of like anybody has a job and says, hey, 50%, uh, we want you to kind of 50% produce. You know, uh, you can only do 50% of your talent. I mean, it's just a really odd thing. Despite all that progress, the county will still be under a state of emergency through the end of the year as more people, especially children, need to be vaccinated. June 15th is uh, not the magic date or bullet for uh, declaring that the pandemic is over. It is not. We are still seeing cases. Also, there are challenges for small businesses to get employees back on the job and an increased demand to hold special events and parties. This is a huge, huge item for a lot of restaurants in our community. Yeah. This summer is going to be almost like a summer renaissance for people to enjoy life. And you can see the modifications that Great Maple and Hillcrest has made with these plastic dividers separating each booth. And come after the June 15th deadline, Father's Day weekend, Great Maple Hillcrest will be open officially indoors. Heather Hope, News 8. Kind of a, a soft opening here in San Diego County. At least we know we are at that two per 100,000 threshold, and that's good news. Very good news, and people are ready to go. Yeah. All right, thousands of criminals around the world thought they were communicating over a private network, but they were wrong. The communication system they were using was actually set up by the FBI, which intercepted millions of messages and agents relayed what they learned to the appropriate law enforcement agencies. News 8's Steve Price explains the San Diego connection and how it worked. It started as a federal investigation here in San Diego, but quickly grew into an international bust with hundreds of people arrested, tons of drugs seized, and millions of dollars confiscated. One transaction even alleges the transfer of cocaine from Carlsbad to Australia. This bust in Australia, part of a major roundup over the past 48 hours of suspected criminals around the world. These international arrests and the U.S. charges were possible because of a San Diego-based FBI investigation like none other in history. It centered around cell phones that ran on a private encrypted communications platform that you had to be invited into by other criminals. You cannot walk into a Verizon or AT&T store and purchase one of these devices. You must know somebody who sells them and be vetted by them. Undercover agents convinced international crime rings to use it, and they started sharing it with other criminals who thought it was a secret encrypted network. They openly marketed them to other potential users as designed by criminals for criminals. It didn't take long before 12,000 of these devices were in the hands of bad guys who sent 27 million messages from drug deals to illegal gun sales and even murder hits, all of them intercepted by authorities who say the information they obtained prevented more than 100 murders, led to 800 arrests and a trove of illegal goods. More than eight tons of cocaine, 22 tons of marijuana, two tons of methamphetamine and amphetamine, six tons of precursor chemicals, 250 firearms, and more than 48 million in various worldwide currencies. And buried in a search warrant, News 8 found this, a picture of what's believed to be six kilograms of drugs from a cocaine transaction from Carlsbad, California to Australia. The FBI shut down the messaging system on Monday, but for criminals, doubts about security will certainly continue.
This will let lead all of our um, criminals guessing of what company out there is actually a true secure company and which is run by potentially the government. Steve Price, News 8. A lot of criminals off the streets. Thanks so much, Steve. The man accused of killing a beloved donut shop owner two years ago has pleaded not guilty to murder, burglary, and grand theft charges. 58-year-old Randy Tang was killed during a break-in at his Claremont home back in April 2019. Tang owned Rose Donuts in Linda Vista for decades. Police believe the suspect, Keon Wilson, is also behind a string of other residential burglaries in Carlsbad and Poway. New tonight, a man from Costa Mesa accused of killing a six-year-old boy in a road rage shooting on an Orange County freeway has been charged with murder. Prosecutors say 24-year-old Marcus Anthony Ariz fired the shot that killed Aiden Leos, who was riding to school with his mom in the backseat of her car. They have also charged Ariz's girlfriend, 23-year-old Wynn Lee, with a, count, with a felony count of accessory to murder. They were set to be arraigned today, but that has been postponed until June 18th. Bail has been set at $2 million for Ruiz and a half million dollars for Lee. A former teacher of the year at University City High School is being remembered by her students and colleagues tonight. Donna Fallon was also a wife and mother. News 8's Jesse Pagan is at Kellogg Park in La Jolla Shores, where students and staff paid tribute this afternoon. The students say this was the power of Mrs. Fallon, able to bring everyone together, make them laugh, make them cry, and leave a lasting legacy. She gave her all, making a difference in so many people's lives. As the ocean breeze carried their words, more than 100 members of the University City High School community gathered to remember Donna Fallon. She touched every life that got close to her, spreading positivity and love with every interaction. Fallon died unexpectedly after suffering an aneurysm. She taught English at the school and led the Associated Student Body for two decades. Honestly, I just feel so lucky that we did get to spend the last yeah. Yeah. month and a half with her in person since we were online Absolutely. for the last yeah. years. After the initial shock, senior Gabby Bruce and the rest of the Student Body Executive Board got to work, organizing this memorial at Kellogg Park and walking on the beach to release flower petals into the water. Longtime principal Jeff Olivero, along with other teachers and staff, watched as students, current and past, shared stories and memories. The impact that she's had on all of us, and this is just a demonstration of their love. A GoFundMe has been set up in memory of Mrs. Fallon and in support of her three sons she leaves behind. Her students say education and a little humor were two of the most important things to her. Those part of the legacy she stamped on the community. She yeah. was a pillar of not only the community, the school, her family, she's yeah. Mama Fallon. And the executive board of that ASB, that student body at the high school, says they've set up an entire week, calling it Fallon Week, all in memory of her. Carlo, Marcella.